Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is the Vikings Garage. And on today's episode, I have been staying quiet for long enough. I wanted to come here and give you guys my reaction, my opinion as a technician. And as you guys know, very proud owner of uh, two Forerunners now. First and foremost, my hat's off to Toyota. I want to congratulate them in 40 years of success. This is by all means a very successful story. And I think you guys can agree that it is going to continue because what they just revealed, it is indeed, in my personal opinion, a very good product. There are some questions, we will get to it, but for what we have, I think they definitely nailed it. Do want to apologize in advance, guys. I have a lot of notes here because I think there's a lot of very important points that I do want to make. So please do bear with me if you see me looking down is because I don't want to go on camera saying something that isn't true. So without any further ado, I'm going to start with the elephant in the room, which is the engine. I know, I know, we're going from a V6 to a four cylinder. Boy, I could be here all day, but I'm not going to. Actually, I'm going to leave this one topic in a very positive note. So follow me on this. It will be a 2.4 liter, as they call it, an iForce Max, that is going to be put out 278 horsepower and 317 foot-pounds of torque, which is obviously more than the current generation. Uh, let's face it, chances are you're going to find the T24A FTS that is currently being used in several Toyotas and, of course, Lexus models. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, as far as reliability, I think... We are going to be okay. Me personally, I have not yet encountered anything worth mentioning when it comes to that engine. Uh, then again, it has not been out for more than, I want to say, three years, maybe four, with some Lexus models. But as far as I know, there isn't anything crazy. And it is a plus for some of you that might be in doubt, because if Toyota is putting this engine on the 4Runner, Think about it. It's been out for a little while, so the bugs have been sorted out. I do, of course, have to mention also the optional power plant, which as the addition of the hybrid system. Uh, there will be a electric motor sandwich in between the transmission and the engine, taking place of the torque converter. And with that addition, the power bumps up to 326 horsepower and 465 foot-pounds of torque, which I believe that is extremely impressive. Uh, I can totally see those numbers pulling 6,000 pounds of uh, capacity when it comes to towing. And let's not forget, it is paired up with an 8-speed automatic transmission, which does replace, yes, that five speed that everybody was complaining about. So therefore it will be turbocharged and electrified. But hey, listen, it's not a bad combination in my opinion, but I do agree with a lot of you. We have to give us some time. We have to see what happens. Uh, I'm not gonna go ahead and sell my Forerunner just so we're all clear there. I uh, would love to bring the newest generation forerunner into the channel. There are some talks that we might be replacing the wife's car with that one, but you guys will have to stay tuned and find out. Now, I do want to touch some uh, points here that I thought were super important. It will come with the rear locking differential. 
uh, thank God for that. Uh, new will be the sway bar disconnect. I think that's really neat. Uh, the hands free power tailgate, I think everybody is pretty pumped about that. Me as a technician, I see it as another thing to fix, but to each their own. I had no problem lifting the gate, but I get it. It's a nice thing to have, nonetheless. And in the same token goes the 3D multi-terrain monitor. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, that one a little more necessary than the tailgate, but again, more things to fix. Uh, a very cool one is that digital rear view mirror. If you guys haven't seen it, check it out. That's really neat technology. Especially if you're like me and you're always loading up the inside of the truck with a lot of stuff. With a flip of a switch, you can actually see clear what's actually happening behind the truck without, of course, any of that inside obstruction. I think that's a really neat technology and I'm very happy to see it here in our next generation 4Runner. Continue along with some of these improvements that were made. Uh, I have to say there are three in my list. They're minor to some, but to me, I am very excited about this. Uh, check it out. Actually, it's four. You see what I'm saying? I am like getting lost in the sauce because I'm so excited about little things like that. Locking gas cap door. Hello. <laughs> Finally, we can actually have a locked gas door. How crazy was that? That these cars had a gas door that you could just access at any point in time. I think that's really neat. I really like the fact also that they are finally including a trail breaker uh, that comes with the vehicle instead of you having to add an accessory one. I mean, I think uh, it's about time they do that. Uh, another thing that I think was super smart on their part to uh, change its location is the back window, which of course I almost forgot. The back window is obviously still sliding down as I'm sure everybody knew because otherwise we would be out there on the streets creating all sorts of riots because there ain't no forerunner coming out without the rolling down window. But like I was saying, the switch for that window is actually up on the roof. Why is that important? Because Tell me how many of you, by mistake, roll the window down just a smidge because of its location being in the center and on the bottom. And a lot of the times we would just, by mistake, touch it and roll it down ever so slightly. Um, it's definitely an improvement to place it up top. Very, very clever on their part. And then last but not least would be those rear seats. I'm very happy to see that they kept that reclining position on the rear seats. It was one of my favorite cool features that the 4Runner has, and I'm glad they, they kept it that way. I'm a little unsure on the way these back seats are folding now, but let's not jump into conclusions. Let's get our hands on the car and then be the judge. It might not be the end of the world, but for what I see, they're not laying completely flat and I'm not 100% sure how much that's going to affect the space on the inside, but hey, we shall see. And continue along before I go ahead and give you guys what it is, in my opinion, my favorite trim that most likely would be the one I would be interested in. And of course, I do want to know which one is the one catching your eye. So please do leave your options in the comment section down below. But there are some questions that I have before I get to that uh, topic. So I'm curious, uh, what is the weight? How much is this vehicle going to weigh? Especially when you put that um, hybrid stuff in it. So. How much is it going to weigh in the iForce Max hybrid EV configuration? Uh, I'm really curious to see uh, how much weight the hybrid portion actually adds to the truck. Because I think, and I speak for a lot of people, that might be a deal breaker. Because will the gas mileage 
really change from one to the other, which is the other topic I want to make. What is the gas mileage going to be? That's super important. As a forerunner owner, and I'm sure you guys can agree, that's always been one of the compromises I've always made. I've accepted it for what it is. She's not perfect. She's very thirsty. What can you do? Is the new one going to be thirsty? I'm really eager to see that. Pricing. How much are these things going to cost? I think everybody wants to know, right? So what is the price? So that some of us can start preparing a little better. So I'm very eager to see what the price is. I know it's going to be coming down the pipe very soon. But we shall see. Uh, with the Land Cruiser uh, in that lineup and all, I'm not entirely sure where the pricing for the Forerunner is going to land. But we shall see. Um, reliability, of course. Everybody wants to know that. But guys, if I might say so myself, Toyota is known for one thing. So I don't think you guys have anything to worry about. Yes, there will be a bit of a change, but you best believe that it will be reliable. That's what Toyota is known for, so why wouldn't it? And last but not least, I know this one might sound a little weird, but mind you, I work on these things. So what kind of brakes? What brakes is this 4Runner going to have? Is it going to be the same thing that the new 4Runner, I mean, the, excuse me, the new Tacoma has? I really want to know what kind of brakes they're going to have because, as I'm sure you guys know, one of the flaws with the 5th Gen has always been the front brakes. You know, it's uh, plagued with all sorts of issues, but small little price to pay for such a great car, right? I'm just very curious as a mechanic myself. Uh, I would like to know what kind of brakes is going to have, you know, rotor sizes, what kind of calibers and whatnot. Just something that I personally am uh, looking forward to finding out just like the rest of you. But now without any further ado, I'm going to tell you guys what is my trim level of choice. And again, leave yours down below. Are you team TRD Pro or are you team Trail Hunter? If you follow me on social media, I might have left already some hints on which one is actually catching my eye. Uh, I gotta say, I am digging that Everest green color. Yes, I am of course referring to the Trail Hunter, that new trim level that they are releasing with the new 6th Gen 4Runner. It's definitely catching my eye. Just a few things that I definitely am super pleased to know that I possibly could be able to buy a vehicle that will have this from the get-go. Yes, I'm in the business here of making videos and tweaking them and whatnot, but it is kind of nice to know that you could buy a 4Runner brand new with warranty with roof rack. It's a roof rack that I believe was made by ARB, if I'm not mistaken. So ARB and Old Man Emo did provide some help with this particular trim level. So other than the roof rack, it comes with a skid plate that they made a little twist there and it will actually have imprinted the word trail hunter instead of the usual that we're used to TRD. Uh, it will have, which I think is super, super cool, high mount air intake. Yes, I know a lot of people are calling it the snorkel, but it is by all means a high mount air intake, cold air intake for that matter. Uh, I think it's super cool. And I'm eager to see it in person and how it uh, sounds while you're driving it. It will come with rock sliders, side rails. So I think, uh, you know, as you guys know, I ended up installing those in my truck. And to know that this thing will come with them from the get-go is A-OK -okay with me. An air compressor in the trunk. Are you kidding me? Take my money. Hello, how cool is that? Uh, yes, my car came stock with an air compressor in the trunk. <laughs> That's freaking amazing, man. And a few more other things to add here. So it comes with that light bar that's integrated into the front 
grille, which by the way, it does come with the Toyota across it, that heritage style that I am clearly a fan of. Uh, other things, as opposed to the TRD Pro, this one has orange accents on the inside. I really like the way that looks, especially with that soft text trim seats. The stitching in orange looks really cool. My personal opinion, I'm just not a fan of that camo uh, theme thing that the TRD Pro has got going on. It doesn't do it for me, guys. I'm in my 40s, I'm not a camo trim on a seat. I, nothing personal, I just personally don't get it. Um, what else? So you'll have pre-wired auxiliary switches. That's really smart. It's about time they do something like that on a car of this caliber. Because after all, let's face it, we are gonna install more stuff to it, aren't we? What else can we talk about? Of course, uh, TRD Pro and the Trail Hunter will have crawl control. Most likely TRD off-road as well. I'm not entirely sure. Again, we're just speculating here on some of the stuff. It does come stock with the blacked out badging. You see what I'm saying? I think you can agree with me. This is a Vikings garage spec. They might be fans. They might be watching the channel. Toyota, hit me up. Hey, I'm ready to co collaborate with you guys. I'll uh, let you guys in into some more ideas that I've had for quite a while working up here. So what else can we talk about? Yeah, both the RD Pro and the Trail Hunter will have a 2,400 watt inverter. That's always very neat. And let's not forget a small little detail here, but it is very important nonetheless. So we went up a size and we do now have 18 inch bronze wheels. You know, Vikings Garage. Once again, love these wheels. And of course, they did it 33 inch Toyo Open Country tires, which I think very clever of them. That was gonna be one of my options along with the KO2s. So props to Toyota for such a lethal combination. Those wheels and those tires are killer. I love it. Just the thought that you can actually buy a car and this specification is almost keeping me up at night. I don't know what to say. Um, guys, and another one which really gets me going is that a lot of people might not know this. So there are some reasons why I ended up buying a TRD Off-Road Premium. One of them was definitely not the sunroof, or as some of us call it, moonroof. Which one do you call it? Is it sunroof, moonroof? Uh, I don't know which one is correct, but I've never been the type of guy that actually, uh, it, that's not a deal breaker for me. I am okay with not having it. And the reason why I'm even bringing it here is because we take our forerunner everywhere. And especially when we are with the kids, uh, just small insight to what we do. Uh, say the little one is crying, so what my, my wife will do, is she'll climb from the front seat to the back and, you know, uh, calm down the kid, give her the bottle, whatever the case might be, uh, keep them entertained. Why am I telling you this story? As you guys remember, my red forerunner didn't have a sunroof. This one has a sunroof. So I kind of know the difference from one to the other. So where am I going with this? Headroom, guys. When you have a sunroof, you lose a little bit of headroom. And me personally, if I was able to get this premium without the sunroof, I just wasn't able to find it, I would have done so. So, Trail Hunter, no sunroof. Yay, I like that. Man, this is totally, totally my trim spec. You have no idea. <laughs> and there you have it, guys. Before I do forget, so that old man emo ARB uh, collaboration there with the suspension brings a lift on this, again, Trail Hunter of two inches in the front, and it is an inch and a half in the rear. Uh, again, I'm really eager to see all of this at play. 
Uh, this is it. This is all that I got. Um, I'll leave you guys with this. If you want to know more as far as the engine is concerned, uh, a little hint. I am actually being sent out to school for that. So stay tuned and I will break it down to you. Everything that will be passed on to me so that you can better decide do you want to go that way or do you want to just go and buy a 2024 before they're all gone? <laughs> and in that shocking, but yet realistic conclusion, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for watching. And if you haven't done so, don't forget to smash that like button. And I hope by now you have subscribed to the channel. Guys, I'll catch you very soon. Just like that, guys, another dream come true right here. Uh, but it wouldn't be without uh, any of that Vikings Garage nonsense fashion that we just picked up a used car that has <laughs> a couple of warning lights in the dash. But these are super minor. I mean, come on, check it out.